What is up guys, Speed here, and today I'm going to be telling you guys some of the things you should be trying in 7.2 ND that I think are particularly strong and that the buffs have severely helped revitalize these heroes, right? Some of these heroes that I'm going to be mentioning were just irrelevant last patch. Actually, almost all of them were completely irrelevant last patch, but this recent 7.2 ND patch has helped kind of lift them up a little bit, bring them back to the greatness that they once were. Before we do get into it, I just want to let you guys know that on GameLeap.com, I just made a Leshrac guide, a full-out Leshrac guide, where I talked about target priority, map movement, a lot of the in-depth and complicated mechanics of Dota that I think a lot of people just don't fully understand. So if you're confused on how to maneuver the map and pressure and really push your lead in Dota, I think Leshrac is a great hero to do that. And not only that, it will just teach you how to do it in every single game, what objectives to take, what words to place, just kind of a whole breadth of Dota in a light you've probably never seen before. But now let's get into 7.21D. So first off is Sniper Magic, and I'm gonna go over this briefly only because I made a video, my last video on the same topic, so I don't wanna go into depth. I'm just gonna be letting you guys know for all the people that didn't watch that video, first off, go check it out. Really fun video for me, had a blast making it. Super, super fun build, super high GPM, super high XPM, just a blast. If you're unsure of it, you go items such as Ethereal Blade, Maelstrom, Midas, and in coordination with your 25% cooldown reduction talent, you farm like an absolute madman. Midas drops below 70 second cooldown, your shrapnel got reduced to 40 seconds last patch, meaning that with the 25% cooldown reduction talent, it is a 30 second cooldown. Shrapnel is one of the best abilities in Dota. It has some of the largest utility, similar to Viper's Nether Toxin, where it lets you farm, it lets you fight, it slows, it does a ton of damage. It's such an incredible ability. So any buff to Shrapnel is a great buff. And that's why I think you should be going, or considering going somewhat of a magic slash hybrid build, where you can go items such as Maelstrom, Ethereal Blade, maybe even Boss, that's one I like. And then when you get to the level 20, you pick up a Blink Dagger, and in coordination with Blink, your level 20 talent, and in Ethereal Blade, you blow up people. So if you want to hear more about this build, check out my previous video, but let's move on to the next one. So the next build is also kind of a core that I think you can go a magic build on, and that is Gyrocopter. Now, I'm not exactly certain on this one, simply because I think the hero is much better as a right clicker, but this is a little bit of speculation for me. The hero at level 10 now has a 250 health talent. This is a great tank talent in the early game. There's not a lot of heroes that actually can match this talent as is. And previously on Gyrocopter, you already bought tons of stats. You bought items such as drums, wraith bands, magic wand. So with this health talent, you have so much HP. In addition, your spells are some of the highest damage spells in Dota in the early game. This is just a fact of Gyrocopter. Rocket Barrage plus Calldown plus Homing Rocket kills every single support in the game, except for like Abaddon, and no one likes that hero, and kills a lot of cores in the early game. And I think if you already have a farming core, such as maybe Medusa or Alk in your mid lane, playing a magic variant of Gyrocopter that completely controls the early game is fantastic. Items you can buy, I would recommend sticking to wand and face boots in an early game. You do want to have some right click, but after that, I would look into items such as drum still, veil, kaya and yasha, atos, all of these items that give you this early game spike that makes it very hard to fight gyrocopter. Right, all these items give you very good stats and the ability to either get on top of your target or amp their magical damage. In addition, this build scales quite well. It's one of those builds where it seems like it would fall off, but Gyro's talents make it somewhat viable. At level 10, right, you have the health. At level 15, you get an 11 Rocket Barrage talent, which gives you 50% more damage. Super impressive. And then at level 20 and 25, you get two more talents to help your abilities. 25 second cooldown, cooldown, or you can take the 40 movement speed, which works very well with the Rocket Barrage, and the three homing missile charges, which is fantastic. Overall, I would think what is more viable than going a full out magic build is more of a hybrid. You can go items still such as the Veil in the early game, but for the most part, I would recommend in coordination with these magical damage oriented items such as Atos and Veil to go a mix where you can either buy Ags, Maelstrom, or you can buy something like a Shadow Blade almost or any, any of these items that give you the ability to right click a little bit because sometimes if you do go full into magic, you won't be able to take objectives, you won't be able to take Roshan. It can be a little bit hard to farm, Ancient Camps in particular. So I think a hybrid build is particularly good. Now I'm not certain exactly what the build should be, as this is mostly just speculation, but go ahead and try it out and let me know what you guys think would be best on Gyrocopter in the comments. Next up is Sand King. 
Sin King's buffs, I think, were probably top 3 of the last patch. His Sandstorm from 80 at level 4 is now 95. This is basically back to what it was when the hero was super, super popular. Sandstorm is Sand King's best ability, undoubtedly, at least core Sand King. And I don't think you could play Sand King as a support, really. It takes too much to come online. It doesn't have that much impact in the laning stage. So as a core, specifically position 3, I even think Sand King's actually a decent mid. However, as a position 3, now that Sandstorm is buffed, you have the utility that allows you to fight farm and disengage much better this is your best ability it's what you wanted to max out so any buff to it similar to shrapnel per se which is what you want to max on sniper is a massive buff to the hero so sandstorm buff on sand king really in my opinion is going to bring it back in addition he got a stun cast range increase which is great it's just good the items i would recommend you go on this sand king tank build are along the lines of treads if you are really snowballing in the landing stage and don't need mana, Tread Soul Ring is insane how much HP it gives you. It's really nuts. After that, you can go items such as Hood of Defiance, Vanguard, and then if you're really snowballing hard, in addition with these items, you can buy a Radiance, and your team fight is incredible. This hero has some of the highest AoE damage in the game. If you have Radiance, Sandstorm, your ultimate, and your stun on any target or multiple targets, you instantly win the fight. Securing Sanking a good lane, in my opinion, is one of the scariest heroes to snowball throughout the game, especially with this tank build, because he's so hard to kill, and the longer he lasts in the fights, the more damage he naturally does with Sandstorm, and after its buffs, I definitely recommend you try this out. In addition, I just want to note a side item that I think is good. It's Blink Dagger. Please don't just completely skip out on Blink Dagger. You can buy it as a third or fourth item, but I think a lot of people completely skip it, and I would still recommend getting it later on. In addition, Veil of Discord is one of my favorite items in Dota that I think is underrated. 25% magical damage amp with Sandstorm is fantastic as is. Increases it by almost another 20, and if you're buying Radiance, it works even better. Next up is Storm and Bloodstone. So if you guys haven't seen the recent videos or gameplays on it, Storm Spirits are now buying 3 to 4 to 5 Bloodstones. It's quite comical, but the thing is, Storm has been buffed so much that his landing stage is actually quite formidable, especially against melee opponents, which it already was good against as is because of Remnant. It's even better. Your Vortex in the early game is now a very good laning spell as it allows you to trade effectively, where in the past it completely negated your ability to trade by slowing you in many different regards, but now that's not the case. In addition, it gives you an overload charge, and therefore Storm is a lot better in the early game. And as a result, this will help you get into the mid and late game, which you'd want to really be at. And as a result, you can get to this three Bloodstone build. Now, what I would say is do not immediately rush three Bloodstones. You still want to get items such as Treads, a Magic Wand, Kaya, and Orchid, right? You can skip out on the Orchid if you feel like it's not a good Orchid game. However, if this is the item build to snowball, some sort of Kaya Orchid build, I would always buy Kaya, by the way, but if you feel like Orchid is going to help you snowball and kill key targets in the game, don't skip it simply because you think you need the mana on Storm. However, after that, instead of going into items such as Shiva's, BKB, Lincoln's, Ags, you're just going to straight up buy three Bloodstones. This basically is the only way in which you can sustain Storm's mana pool because the hero, after all the mana changes, just really struggles to stay in the fights. If you try to kill a support, you often have to use three force to all of your mana pool especially in like the mid and early game. So in order to get to the point which Storm used to be in the past, you have to literally buy three Bloodstones. Or you can find an Arcane Rune, that works too. But the point is, Storm, I think, is somewhat back in games in which he is potent and there's a lot of squishy targets. I think this hero is a complete menace that people are still kind of underrating. So definitely try it out. Definitely do this in a pub before ranked because three Bloodstones is very expensive and takes a long time to come online. And finally, one build that I think is the most obnoxious build of this patch is Venomancer with Spirit Vessel and Ags. Venomancer, as is, was annoying. But this recent patch made his Ags a lot better. The thing about Venom's Ags is if you're not buying it right away, you can get it around the same time or close to the same time in which you're getting your level 20 talent, in which you get 7 seconds extra of Poison Nova duration. So when you get Ags in your level 20 talent, that means your ultimate lasts for 25 seconds and does 125 damage per second. What this means is that you can do up to 3,000 125 damage on one target right this is obviously if they have no magic resistance so the point is you do 3000 damage with a single click of the button if you have a veil it does even more if you have a spirit vessel your tick damage is 
insane. Imagine this also in addition with your take from Poison Sting and your take from Venomous Gale. This hero does so much damage, especially with this new Axe change in your level 20 talent. In addition, I think you're a great hero against a lot of the popular agility cores. You do particularly well against heroes such as Troll in some situations. You do very well against Ursa. You do pretty well against heroes such as PA, decent against Spectre, Razor even decent against any mage so i really think veno has a lot of potential for in the mid lane in the safe lane in the jungle don't do that please don't do that it's good but don't do it and in the off lane right you have a lot of flexibility and this build gives you a ton of survivability where you can buy an early veil a spirit vessel and an axe and no matter who you cast your ultimate on they will die eventually <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed this video of five builds that you can try in 7.21 d i think in particular if i had to choose one that i think is the most potent it's either the veno or the sk build i think the other three are a little bit more speculation the, the storm one isn't necessarily speculation however it takes a long time to come online so it's a little bit hard to pull off sometimes as storms early and mid game can be quite underwhelming however the sand king tank and the veno build doesn't take any time to come online they're strong in the early game and they scale super well so if you can get the right lane for these heroes i think you're gonna see the pure amount of damage that both of them do and the amount of damage in team fights that they can do the fact that both of these heroes with the insane amounts of aoe damage that i talked about can hit up to five targets at the same time it's not even single target Three thousand damage on five targets imagine that's just an instantly one fight but regardless i hope you guys enjoyed if you did as always please do like and subscribe to help the channel grow been trying to post on here a lot for you guys and i think this is a type of video that you guys really enjoy and that i enjoy making because speculation in dota it's the best part about dota this game is so diverse it's constantly changing and that's what makes it so great you can always come up with new ideas and they're often quite viable so lastly, thank you for watching and comment down below if you think there's a hero that is much better than these five that got buffed in the patch and a build that maybe you've been trying so that you can share to the masses. Alright, peace.